another episode of Producer Grind Podcast, man. Out here in LA, we got Taurus. What's good, bro? What's up, bro? You dig? What's popping? Chilling, chilling, bro, man. Um, first of all, bro, is is Tor- your name Taurus? That come from? Is that like your, your zodiac or just? Nah, my zodiac sign actually is Scorpio. I'm okay. named after my pops, though. Okay, dope, yeah. Dope. <laughs> Everybody asked me that. They'd be like, "That's your real name?" Like, yeah, that's my real name. Oh, that's night. your real name. That's my real name. Oh, word. Yeah, and, like I, I wouldn't make a nickname at a zodiac sign, like. Okay. Yeah, that's my real name, though, no, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's dope. Shit, that's a, that's a dope name, though. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> so I know, I know, you, you know, you're based in, in Atlanta, just like us, which I didn't know. Uh, yeah. I thought you're based out here, but um, shit, it's dope to dope to link up with you out here, bro. Yeah, yeah. This this is actually my first time out here since all this quarantine and all that shit. Yeah. You been out here though? Yeah, I've been out here like. I was at, I've been out here probably like two months, then I went back to Atlanta for like a week. But before I went back to Atlanta, I was out here another two months. Okay. So I just been out here chilling. See, what I'm trying to explain to everybody is like Atlanta, remember, you didn't even have to have a mask up until like three weeks ago. For sure. So we're going to Crow, we're going everywhere, like no <laughs> mask. And now all this now all of a sudden they want to be on some funny shit and make us wear masks. <laughs> but out here, I feel like I feel like people are like, if you don't got a mask on, like they're gonna call the police on you. Yeah, no, nah, LA ain't playing. They like take it dead they, they still on it. Like LA ain't playing. Atlanta kind of like lax still, but LA, yeah. LA, LA ain't playing. It's only could be like six people in the store at a time, like to even shop. Right. Like well, we, we, we literally we went to Walmart to get these tables in Burbank yesterday, and we literally, bro, the line was around the corner. Yeah. Like on some Black Friday shit. Yeah, nah, for sure. If you really want it, you gotta stand in line for it now. That's crazy. <laughs> that shit is ridiculous, but but yeah, um. But yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta is definitely more chill. Like certain places, like like Kroger, they make you like I was. I walked in one the other day, like the week before we came, and um, not to talk about the the, the mass shit or whatever so much. But, um, <laughs> nah, you good, bro? We, but I we chopping was it up. In, I, yeah, I was on the phone, and um, literally they like the security. You know how they got securities in the front of Kroger? And they're like, yeah. sir, sir. I'm like, what? Like, you need a mask? <laughs> I was like, oh shit, because I didn't even have one. Literally, yeah. I didn't even have one. I'm they like, finna go on head of state. You seen head of state before with Chris Rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Security, ah, come get you. Bro, I swear to God, <laughs> is that real? Not for real. But um, but yeah, bro, good to have you on the show. Nah, man. for um, sure. Um, so I guess too, while we're talking about LA, for the for the people at home, because you know LA is like one of those Atlanta too, like those sought after places for like producers, yeah, and and uh, engineers and artists. Like you know, I f- a lot of people feel like, oh, if I can only get out there, I can make it. I could do whatever I got to do. Mm. What would you say? What would you say? Some of the main differences between LA and Atlanta, and what do you prefer to work in? Um, honestly, I prefer Atlanta to work in Atlanta. Uh, it's just pr- probably because I'm from Memphis, so it's like I just need the South for some reason. It's just like that culture, just like you know what I'm saying. It just grasp on you. I mean, LA is a nice place to work too, though. Like it's, it give you a free mind where you can just focus on your work and you know the stress. Mm. But I really do prefer at working in Atlanta. Mm. Honestly, yeah, where I fuck with it. Because I I moved I moved out to Atlanta in like 2016, right? Yeah, and I felt like I felt like when I got out there, I was like, damn, I feel like I kind of missed. Like the 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 prime of Atlanta, like I feel like everyone was trying, like it was way way more cooler to come out here and Bro, work type shit. You know, I'd I mean? be saying that all the time. Like I wish I could be in Atlanta, like when niggas was like lean with it, rock with yeah, it. Like yeah, yeah. I wish I was in Atlanta around that time. Like that or, shit or like when, when when Sunny and Metro and South. Oh Southern my first god, out, like, bro. that time right? There, I know that time was crazy. Like studio sessions back then. Yeah. Like I know them studio sessions crazy. That's what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> That's when I was literally at home, like watching the videos and shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, around that time, I'm not even really making beats or nothing. Like, I'm knowing about music, but I'm not, I wasn't even making beats at that time. So I really wasn't even, I seen it, but I really wasn't just hooked onto it. Like, damn, I'm watching these niggas every day. Yeah, like, yeah. I really wasn't hooked onto it like that. Though. Most definitely. Yeah. So for the people at home, man, uh, we definitely want to get into your story, but for the people at home, man, um, Taurus is Gunner's official tour DJ, yeah. also a producer too, uh, yes. produced Skybox on camera, Sun Come Out, 200 for Lunch. Mm-hmm. And co-produced Addy with Turbo and Dirty Diana with Keys. Yes, my brothers. Some, some big placements too. For, and nah. you said you only, you only been making beats for how long? A year. Like a I year. started probably um, February 2019. That's when I started just really like making beats every day, taking it serious. Because I, tr- I tried to make beats like the month before that. And then I just quit. I'm like, bro, I can't do this shit. I suck. Like my shit don't sound good. But then I just locked down. I'm like, bro, I got to do something else. Like I got to do something else. Why? Why? What? The DJing shit not enough, really? Um, no, I love DJing, like doing shows and shit. But it just be like after the shows, like when we go to the studio, it's like I feel like I'm not working, I'm not doing something. Like I'm supposed to mm. still be working. Like mm. I'm falling asleep in the studio, getting high. Like I'm like, bro, I need to be goddamn 
doing something to contribute to because I still want to be working. I'm still turned from the show. I'm still get mm. amped up from the show. So it's like, damn, I want to be doing something else. So that's what really made me like, I need to start making beats. That makes a lot of sense though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely makes sense. And it. watching Wheezy, Turbo, and Keys, just watching them niggas make beats, like yeah. that shit really made me want to just be like, make beats. Like that shit made me really like, damn, these niggas fire. Like this shit hard. Like, it made me really want to like lock in. Like, let me try to really do this shit. Yeah. So how'd you how'd you like? You, I know you said you had tried and you you were like fuck this shit. But when you when you first were like, all right, bet I'm about to take it serious. Like, or how'd you get dope? Were you watching tutorials? Were you working with Weezy and then? Um, I really just watched them niggas and then I I would just sit on my computer all day and play. Like I couldn't really watch a tutorial on YouTube because that shit like my attention span. So I, I ain't gonna say it, it was small. It was just small then. Like I can't just sit right there and watch. Yeah. Like I just get the little part I want. Like I've you watched tutorials before, but yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't. That's not how I really learned. I just sat right there on the computer all day, just trying to find my sound with this shit. Like this shit was hard though. Like I ain't gonna lie, that shit. That shit. You got to be strong for shit like that. Like you got to really be able to be with yourself and be like. Man, I'm gonna be better tomorrow. Mm. Type shit, like, mm. yeah. And you got you got to be dedicated to that shit because it's like, if I feel like if you just if you just if you just do it just because you think it's dope or you think it's yeah. cool, you're not gonna stick with. Yeah, it. Yeah, you really gotta love have a passion for music. Like, I feel like if you don't want the biggest thing out of if you don't really love doing this shit, like you shouldn't do it. Mm. Like, if the world came to a point and that was like, you gotta have a job but you don't get paid. Like, you don't need if, if whatever yeah, yeah, your job yeah. you pick, you don't need. You don't need to be doing this shit if you ain't gonna do it for free. Mm. Honestly. You, would you say the same thing about DJing too? Hell yeah. Like I love doing shows and shit. Word. Like really just I like doing shows. Like I DJ, I like DJing in the club, but that's not really my thing. I really don't like doing it like that. What's the difference between DJing clubs and DJing show? Um, a show is really like you just going out there with energy. Like I just love like hyping people up, getting like turning up the the club is kind of like you just setting the mood for the room, like reading the room and shit. Like it's cool, but sometimes people just don't really appreciate the music when you DJ in the club because they there to have a good time. They're not there to come listen to the mm. DJ. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like it go it go hand in hand. Like I, I like doing shows more though, hundred percent. I guess that makes sense because like for a show, people are hundred percent there for the music. Yeah, yeah, the mosh pits and shit. Like oh my god, I love doing shows, bro. For I can't wait. That's crazy. I don't really know. I don't really. I don't. I don't be going to shows and shit, so I don't really know nothing. About, oh man, about that, that like. shit a whole nother world. That shit a whole nother. This shit lit. Word. <laughs> so real. so yeah, bro. I mean, shit. Just I guess so. You, I know you grew up in Memphis, right? Yeah. Um, in the in the in the Tennessee part or the Arkansas part? Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. He part. talking about the Arkansas part. <laughs> That's West Memphis. Nah, I grew up. I'm really from Memphis, for real. Okay, like, but but it's like the city's really split in half though by the state type shit. I mean, it's like it's like if you cross the bridge, then you in Arkansas. But it's it's not like people just really go there. Like people go there to gamble and shit. Okay. For real. Okay. It's not really like a part of people from. There. Well, I don't know. Well, <laughs> Only reason I know about that, you know, you know who B Rex is, the uh -uh. producer. He uh, he actually he he uh, co produced um he co produced the shit with Drake and and um and Gunner for real yeah yeah on uh, Never Recover oh, man I don't know why 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 I'm not thinking of the name the big ass song that they did yeah Never Recover that's the joint Never Recover mm -hmm. and um no 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 I'm talking about Drake and Drake and Baby oh um yes indeed, yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah yes indeed yeah but anyways um shout out to B Rex though because he was on the show and he had told us he's from uh. West uh, West Memphis, Arkansas. Yeah. I'm like, what is West Memphis, Arkansas? Yeah, it's really just Arkansas. Okay. They trying, you know, they trying to get to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, bro. They just trying to, um, trying to, trying to get some. Nah, there. shout out to Memphis, man. Yeah. Dude. Facts. So, so what's it like growing up in Memphis? Um, that shit was cool, bro. Like that shit really helped me become who I am today. Like that was the best place I could have grew up and been born in. Like my whole upbringing, I really never. Grew up DJing or making beats and nothing like that. Like I played basketball my whole life, so okay. I was just like like getting fresh, putting on clothes and fucking with the girls and shit. Like that's how I like really was doing. Were my, you like taking basketball serious? Like it was your dream? Yeah, yeah, shit? that was my whole thing. Like, that was my whole life. Like summertime was AU, and then school time I, I was playing basketball for middle school until high school, and then when I got to college, this shit just shit just ain't work out. What you mean? <laughs> like I I went. I went down there like in the summertime to work out with them. I, um, I graduated from Clark Atlanta University. So I went down there in the summertime to work out with them and got cool with the coach. I did cool in the workout. He was like, you just got to 
try out. You know what I'm saying? Like you try out, you make it. So we had like a conditioning, then go to the gym. So the conditioning kicked my ass. So that's why I really did make the team. Mm. Damn, I can't believe I just really said that. I just admitted that to myself on count. Yeah. <laughs> that's all good though. Shit, it's being real. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. That shit was just one of them hard things for me to just like get over. Like, damn, I ain't playing basketball no more. Mm. That was my whole life. You know niggas be like, you it's gonna be one in a million that's gonna make it. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna be one of them one in a million that's gonna make yeah, it yeah. to the league. And then shit didn't happen. It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> Did, were you smoking and shit back then too? Um, I would I would probably hit the weed like with the homies, but I was so focused on basketball in high school. But when I got to college and then I, I won't hooping no more, oh I was gone. Weed every day, smoking. Like when I learned how to really just roll up for real, I'm oh I'm gone. Weed oh, head. <laughs> By that shit, we gonna smoke after this too. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> you uh, you you started um, you started DJing in um in in college too or no? Yeah, I was in. Uh, I started DJing prior to the end of my um the end of my sophomore year. That's when I started DJing for real. Like, like I threw a, I threw a party and shit. It was like it was like a little bar up the street from the school. I saw I, everybody fuck with me at school, so I threw a party and um. Shit, I threw this shit on a laptop because I didn't really know like you had to have a DJ board to go right, DJ right, and right. shit. So I threw a le- uh, part on the laptop. And man, this bitch, like, she just like, she was annoying the shit at me, like, just tripping at the DJ booth. So I cut the music down. I'm like, hey, security, come get this bitch. Like, so I cut the music back on. I, I cut on that um, Three Six Mafia. When I say weak ass, you say bitch. Damn. The whole club, weak ass bitch. Yeah, put her on So black. that's what really made me. And then uh, one of my brothers, DJ Cash, she, um, he was a DJ in Nashville. Okay. He, he's still DJ. Um, he DJ for Slime right now. So he was DJ in Nashville. So when I go to Nashville just to go visit, he'll be fucking the club up. So I'm like, oh shit. Like, I need to start DJing. I just like the reaction, and I already knew music my whole life. So I'm like, damn, I like this reaction on people. I I might need to start really DJing now. Yeah. What, so what's the, what's the main things that you got to be good at to be a DJ? Um, you really got to be able to read the crowd good. Like you can't be too selfish and be playing the shit you want to play. But you can put the shit you want to play, put your own flavor on it. But you know what I'm saying? You got to read the crowd good. I always hear everybody. I always hear people say you got to read the crowd, but I never really know what that means. <laughs> like you got to. I, I feel like you really get, just got to know music. You got to have a big ass music library because it could be different crowds. It could be some older people in the crowd. And you play some old shit and that turned up the crowd. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or it could be a whole bunch of girls in the crowd. So you need to play. Or it could be like it could be motherfuckers in there from New York. And it could be uh, more New York motherfuckers in there than Atlanta people. So you go New York set, you turn the whole club up just off some. I knew these for all these from New York. So let me just play some New York shit right now. Mm. Like that shit. I, I love that shit though. Like just the reaction off people. I love that shit. So you really gotta, yeah, you really gotta know music. Yeah, you gotta have a big music library for sure. Being from the South, did you ever listen to New York shit growing up? For sure. Dipset, Kiss. I love yeah. all that shit. Hell yeah. Kiss. I feel, I feel like a lot of people like because when I moved to Atlanta, because I'm from New York. Yeah. I feel like coming to Atlanta, especially like young people, like they don't really. No, nah, I just I always appreciate the New York culture so much, just like the way them niggas dress, just that culture. Like I just G Unit, all them niggas. Like I I just I fuck with New York culture for sure. I, well, like I grew up listening to all different type of music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, yeah, my boy JB, who usually sits right yeah. here, like he'll be like, bro. Damn, yeah, JB, boom, what's up, shit. bro? Where you at, JB? Right, right. And then there's social distancing, man. Carrington and JB. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Man, shout it's out all right. Shout out to JB. Yeah, not fact. Talk to you soon, Sean. JB and Carrington. Oh, you, you know JB? I, I don't know him, but I, I didn't see your show okay, plenty of yeah, times, yeah, and yeah. I seen like you had more people right now. Yeah. Word. I fuck with him, no. Slap in this. Nah, facts, facts. <laughs> nah, yeah, JB's the plug, man. He, uh, when I moved to Atlanta, you know, he he's the reason I even know Turbo and all them and stuff. Yeah. And, like, we know we linked up and, and uh, got them on the show. Yeah, that's shit. how, that's the, that's not the first time I seen your shit, but that's really made me like, oh, let me look at this shit. Cause y'all was really asking some good questions on, on them over. You know, it, some interviews be different. Some people don't really be knowing, don't really be into the music, yeah. which I was really into. I'm like, I like this. And it was a long interview. It was a cool, look. you know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. hear them over out. So yeah, I, when we started the show, because you know, like a lot of these basic interviews, the ones that like, I feel like that they, they have like two, three hundred views because they'll be like the basic ass questions. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? nah, for sure. These folks want to know the juicy stuff, man. They want to know the gems, hell yeah. Nah, for sure. So, so you started DJing in college, and then, um, and then yeah, how did it, how did you go from uh, Memphis to to doing everything you're doing now? Like, 
Um, uh, so I was de- when I was DJing in college, I, I had moved from Memphis just to go to college. The college I went to is in Atlanta. It's HBCU. So I, I, when I moved from Memphis, what college? Um, it's Clark Atlanta University. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. HBCU. And shout out to um the Panthers out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta shout them out. But um, yeah. When I after I started after I threw that party, I just went about DJ board and started just trying to build my name more, build the DJ name more. But I got into the game late. I'm a finna be a junior now in college. So they already had everybody they had locked in already. Like, bro, I, I lost, like, I got in DJ battle. I lost this shit and everything in front Damn. of the whole school. Damn. Like, this shit was, uh, bro, I was sick. I'm like, damn, this shit not, might not be for me. So wait, what's it? I feel like when I think of DJ battle, I'm thinking of like scratching and shit, but it's- I mean, you know, it's new school. Niggas ain't really going up there scratching. It's yeah, real like- some juice shit. Yeah, <laughs> man, it, should, it should've been hard though. Fact but up. it was really just like, turning up the crowd type shit. Okay. But I just had to take my steps to the back door. I started trying to DJ more in Atlanta clubs, more than just trying to DJ on campus to be the most popular campus DJ. Mm. So that's how I really started building my name. I started DJing at this club called The Venue. And that's a club that really just started letting me close and do my thing. I started to DJ there from like 12 to three on every Friday and every Saturday. This is like my junior year. So that's the first club when I really started just building my name and people like will come fuck with me at the club. How'd you even get the club to let you get a set like that? Um, One of the promoters, Used to do parties at uh, on 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 uh, at Clark's campus, so he just fucked with me off river, just I was a cool nigga. So he was like, "Bro, you trying to DJ up here? I got a new club, like, come, you know what I'm saying?" Yeah, yeah. So he just like, gave me that bliss. So relationships is really yeah, yeah, yeah. Relationships yeah. for sure, hundred percent, most definitely. So so um, so you started so you started doing that. So were you like, were you thinking about like actively trying to build your build your brand like like. The way, like you know, like if someone's like, "Yeah, this is my set career," you know, what I mean, the producer's yeah. like, "Yeah, I gotta build my brand and I gotta, I gotta, you know, get my followers up." Were, were you thinking that deep about it? Or were you just? Oh, uh, I really started. I started to when I first started DJing, but then when it started getting toward the end of my junior year, beginning of my senior, year, I started getting frustrated. Like, damn, like I'm about to stop DJing because I'm this shit ain't going nowhere. I ain't, I, I ain't getting a lot of new bookings and shit. So I really, I started to think about that, but it's, I started like fuck, to say fuck that shit. Damn, so that's crazy. So you knew you knew it was over for basketball and you were kind of thinking it was over for the DJ. And so what did you even think you were going to like end up doing? I, I didn't know, bro. I was, I was lost in the sense. Um, this and this, this is how um, me, when Gunner hit me, like when us first linking, that's what really made me start thinking like, okay, maybe... Maybe I can find try to go this way, cause how we met was I was I was DJ in the club. This is about drip season one, drip season two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I was DJ in the club and I just play his shit all the time. So then I fuck around, just started tagging him. Then he just hit me back like fire, like hard, like appreciate the type shit. So about the fifth time I I did it again, he hit me like, "Do you DJ for anybody?" Yeah. So then I'm like, "Nah." And then he like, um, "When I get back to Atlanta, pull up on me." Then it had been like two weeks, and then I hit him turn again, like a little, a, little, a little bit. Turn the mic up. Oh, well, it's like a studio, mate. You got to talk. Oh damn, my fault. My chick, chick. I should have told you. You could actually just lift it up like this, like bend it. Uh, yeah, that's oh shit, yeah, this good like this. Yeah, good. My bad. <laughs> All right, uh, where I was at? Uh, yeah. So, so I'm gonna hit you up. Yeah, he hit me like, do you but, DJ but, for anybody? First, first of all, I think it's dope because you said this is like drip season one and two. So this, yeah. is, this is before Gunner was like crazy big. Yeah, no, for sure. This was the only, drip season one and two were the only albums around that time I could really play beginning to end and yeah, don't yeah. press skip on that shit. Right. Like that was, and all that shit. shit was bro, right. this shit was my favorite shit. So I'm like, I'm playing, this was me being a selfish DJ playing with the fuck I want to play. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about in the yeah. club. This is what I want to hear right now. So he uh, hit me up, but then he had been two weeks, and I hit him back because he didn't hit me back and say, pull up here. So I hit him. I'm like, where you at? He like, bro, I'm still in LA. I ain't even came back yet. Mm. So um, two more weeks passed by. He came back, said, pull up right here. I just pulled it to the studio. We just smoked and shit and then kicked it. And like, and that was that after that. So then he so go. What, what, what were you th- like? What, what what do you think his reason was to pull up? Just just because he's like check a nigga vibe out. What's up? Like you playing my shit? Like what's up? I'm trying to link with. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he yeah. he he was really looking for a DJ at that time. Okay, yeah, yeah. But after um, he had a manager previous, and she already linked him up with a DJ. Mm. But he was an older nigga. He was like 
more experience. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. But he want, he didn't really match Gunner. Like, he was lit, but he didn't match. You know, the DJ and the artist really got to match each they gotta other. They got to vibe out, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got to balance each other out. But this stupid ass nigga missed a show. Mm. And this is this is the young young Nudie. He was on tour with um, Nudie, him and Nudie. Okay. So this nigga misses a show. So Gunner called me like, hey, he can't come to the show. He got to go do something. I need you to come. And I came and I got damn turned that motherfucker right up. Opportunity taken. Nah, for sure. Yeah. I've been waiting on this. Now I already been seeing him with the other DJ on tour. So I'm like, damn, I missed my shot. Like, so that was my one shot I felt. So I'm like, I gotta turn the fuck up whenever I get right here. I gotta turn up. So I turned this shit right up. So like, I know I, you had mentioned like when you first started, you didn't have a board or nothing. Well, what, at, at this point, like, what did you have? Did you just have that basic like one piece board? Or did you have the whole set? Nah, I fuck around and got that big ass board. The one twelve twelve hundred. I spent my last on this shit. I'm that's like, the one that's like a couple bands. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm like, I'm just starting to DJ. But if I pull up to these niggas with this big board, they gonna kind of take me serious. Take you serious? Yeah. Man. Hell yeah. Did you, you gotta, ever have the little one? Yeah, I had the little one for yeah. like two, three weeks. But I'm like, bro, I look lame as hell walking here with this little ass board. <laughs> like, I'm like, bro, I gotta get the big board because you get the big board. Yeah. The nigga ain't gonna know if you could DJ or not. Wow. Nigga ain't gonna know you just started. That's DJing. a gem right there. Nah, for sure. Because it really like, there's not really too much extra shit you're gonna do on that board unless you're really on some scratch and shit. Yeah, for sure. All the, all the old heads gonna be in the party. They they not only niggas really listen to a nigga scratching. These folks just trying to make sure you can blend songs right yeah, and yeah. play the right shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 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 Gemmler right there. If you want to DJ, get the big board because it's a it's a look thing. It's not it has nothing to do with the extra shit you could do. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. But don't get it fucked up. You gotta goddamn learn how to work that motherfucker now. But that's how I lost the DJ battle. Remember I told you I lost the DJ oh, yeah, battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I lost the DJ battle. My stupid ass get the big board. Don't even know how to use it for real. Mm. I done had it two weeks playing on. It. I done lost. <laughs> I laugh at that shit now though. I needed it. Hey, shit, it was meant to be, right? No, nah, for sure. <laughs> so so okay so dope. See so you you see the opportunity, you do you, you kill the show right? But see this the jig this the 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 jig to the store. So I do that show right. Then the other DJ comes back. He comes back and do the show. So gonna ask me like, oh, I need you to sell merch for me. I ain't got nobody to sell merch. So I sold merch for him because I I believe in him. outside the show type shit. Yeah, outside the show because I just yeah. could have been an arrogant nigga and been like. Man, bro, I just DJ the show. Now you want me to sell merch? Like I didn't. I wasn't thinking like that. I'm like, bro, I'm. I'll sell merch for you. Whatever you need me to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like, I believe that's, in you, bro. That's a big gem too. Nah, hell yeah, you need. You got to do that for anybody you believe in. You can't have too much pride and be like, I just got to. Nah, whatever he needs you to do. He this this the dream. You got to believe in the dream. So what what, what do you think? What makes people kind of have that too much pride where they they won't do shit like that? Cause I know me personally, I like if you need me to hold the camera, you need me to put flyers on people's cars, like whatever you need, like type shit. I feel like cause they some people really don't love this shit. Some people love what come with it, the money, the bitches, the clothes and shit. Like I really love this shit, so I'm willing to do anything mm. to, to get the dream accomplished. I'm willing to do whatever, no cap. You don't care if like people see you and and like. Man, there's been plenty of times that I'm carrying bags in, now I gotta go sit up at the DJ table. I don't give a damn these folks yeah. asking, you see the um assist? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't care, bro. I'm here for my brother. I don't give a damn about nothing what any of y'all thinking about or y'all talking about. I'm here for my brother, bro. Big at gym. the end of the day. But but it is a balance too, right? You don't wanna let people take advantage of you. These my brothers. We ain't taking no, advantage of No, I'm not saying them. I'm just saying in general, like for the people at home. Like, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. But you gotta know what you what you there for too. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a purpose now. Yeah. Everybody gotta have a purpose in this shit. Mm. Slap business. Gem <laughs> alert. Yes. Back, so you said the the real gem is you said after the show I was down to sell the merch. Hell yeah. And then, so what you think that like between that and then you being like ready on go like to to pull and just the turn a different energy that just puts some in them like I need to make this my DJ right here. Okay. Because he's younger, he got more energy. And he wouldn't do whatever. He ain't got too much pride for this shit. So that's I really would think what what made me become his official DJ. That's what put in in the hole right now. So was it after that night? It was pretty much locked in. Like, nah, you, actually, you he finished. Place, dude? He finished the tour off with him with the other DJ. Okay. That's another thing that I respected so much about him because he could have just told him then go home. I got mm-hmm. another DJ, but he showed so much love and like you can finish off the tour. But after the tour. Then we was locked in after that. Like, I was the official DJ after that, after the tour. Liddy. <laughs> fire, fire. So, so, okay, so, so then, like, uh, so what was, like, 
obviously, so you pretty much just been there every step of the way. Of, yeah, of after gun, that, every step of the way, I ain't left his side. It was in that, it was in that day. I ain't turned back. So what's it, what's it been like just like, Watching that come up and then also coming up yourself, like in the DJ in the DJ man, world. Man, I'm I'm just blessed. This shit just crazy. It's a whole. It's a process to everything. Like you can't get like depressed and dissatisfied about certain shit. Like certain shit gonna happen for a reason, and then you can smile about it later when the good shit happen. Like, so has there been times like like where you guys as as a team have like kind of it's been unsure like if. Like before, like it really, it really blew up. Like, was there times where it was like, like, damn, when is shit gonna, when is shit gonna happen? No, nah, we always knew we were, we were, we were working toward a goal and we're gonna be big. It was just like when, type shit. But it's like when I was, to me, when I was not even around him, he was already the biggest thing to me with drip season one, drip season two. So I, I, I already was with him regardless of whatever was going on. Like I already felt like he was the biggest, biggest star, drip season one, the first one. Feel me? So what? what uh, so obviously we got we got producers and DJs and engineers that watch this show, mm -hmm. and I always like to ask this question: like, what's like a, a good quality to look for in an artist? Where it's like, yeah, this is someone I could put my time and energy to, and it's not going to be a waste. Um, I feel like y'all should build a relationship. It should be a relationship first. Like, it shouldn't just be on some pull up. We working like pull up on Tuesday when we ain't doing shit with some vibes and some weed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like. People work better like that when it's a natural work. It ain't just we in here working. The A and R call, I need you. Like that's cool. Like, but I feel like just the natural, just like I fuck with you. Like it's a just a natural thing. I feel like you, you work better like that. Word. I work better like that. Yeah, most definitely. So, um, so at what point, at what point, like, where you started to feel like what? What really made you kind of feel like, all right, man, I should be doing extra shit. I should, I should be doing something. I should be making beats. Um, like Probably after the Astro World tour, like toward the end of the Astro World tour with Travis, I really was start making beats and shit. Like I'm really like locked in, really paying attention to Turbo Weezy and Keys. I'm really that's around the time, around that time. Yeah, that shit really made me want to lock in. So give me, I know because being on these tours, we there's got to be some kind of crazy story you could you could share. Some something that went down, something crazy. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Oh, um, I can't even say that one on camera. <laughs> I can't even say that on camera, y'all. Y'all had to just come, come to me and just ask me the story. I'll tell y'all the story. Ask me in person. Yeah, just ask me in person. I can't tell that on camera. <laughs> Damn, no, not even not even a light little story. <laughs> I can't say that one. I can tell y'all a crazy story. Um, Rolling Loud, Miami. Oh my God, bro. I was so fucked up. Y'all can go look that, that show up. Everybody in the comments is on my ass. I was so drunk, bro. I feel everything in that show. Like, yeah. I was fucked up. Like, everybody in the comments is like, hey, shut the fuck up. Like, you loud as fuck. Like, that shit right there was one of them moments where I was like, fuck. I'm goddamn. That was one of them just moments right there. Loud as fuck, like what? You were doing too much on the mic and shit? Yeah, do, you know how that shit be. DJ can do too much ease. And it was a live recording, so I'm not hearing, knowing it's going to sound like this on the live stream. You know what I'm saying? I was fucked up, but I failed, bro. Like, really failed. Like, I jumped down to the crowd, come back on stage. Oh, you did a, uh, a crowd surf? No, I didn't do a crowd surf. Oh. It's like when we um perform Three Headed Snake, I go out to the crowd and fuck with them. Okay. But, um... Bro, the last stage was too big. I jumped up back up on stage. My pants were too tight. Man, I jumped up, fell right back, <laughs> fell right back down in front of everybody. Bro, I was so embarrassed, and I fucked up this show. It's crazy. Yeah. That was a crazy moment. Y'all go look that show up right now, please. It's drunk acting crazy. <laughs> so, um, so okay, so I guess this is a good example because we were just talking about doing too much. What's the what's your opinion on the role of a tour DJ and a hype man? Like, what's what's the most important thing for them? Um, don't you got to learn your pockets? It's certain pockets in the song where you don't need to say nothing. It's certain pockets where the artist needs you to say something. You know what I'm saying? I really feel like learning your pockets and learning your voice and being comfortable with your voice. That's probably the two biggest things I could say. Like that, you really need to be a good tour DJ or a hype man. I feel like that's a real big thing. Being comfortable with your voice, cause I I know my boy, he uh he's been DJing for like a year now, but he he doesn't really say too much on the mic. Yeah, and and he's told me he's just like yeah, like I don't know, like it's just kind of weird, cause he's not really like that kind of person. 
Yeah, I, I didn't like this shit at first. I didn't like my voice either at first. I just had to learn how to work with it. Just that shit. But yeah, I can understand how he'd be like, man, I hate my voice. Bro, I know I know that feeling because when I started this podcast and stuff, like, because at first I had it before we did the video and stuff. We used to do it like just audio, like over Skype and stuff. Yeah. And I would go back and listen and be like, bro, I don't even want to put this out. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I really just You're just it. doing a podcast. Right, you ain't right. even doing, you ain't even... Yelling lyrics or nothing, right? Nah, that's what I'm real. saying. Yeah, so I, I definitely, I definitely feel people's pain on that. Nah, yeah, that shit, hell. So, um, all right, so you start making beats, and then you said at first you were just like, "This shit is too hard." What, what was too hard about it? It wasn't that it was too hard. It just I didn't get the right sound. I had played beats for Gunner a couple times, and he didn't like them. So I, the just the beats that I was making, I didn't, I didn't think they sounded good. Did Weezy and them at least give you some sounds? Lace you up with sounds? Yeah, they laced me up with some sounds for okay, sure, hundred okay. percent. But I was gonna say, damn, that'd be wrong if they didn't. No, nah, for sure, they my brothers. We locked in. They laced me up with some up. sounds for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what, what do you, what, what's your, like your go-to sounds now? What do you fuck with the most? Um, uh, like plugins. Yeah, um, or drum kits. Is there any secret drum kits that you fuck with? Heavy? Um, and we gotta lace you up too before you go. Hell yeah. Um, I used really the same shit I've been used. Hey, um, my brother Keys gave me um a pack like his um pack like that's probably like my go to right now. Okay. Plugins, um, basic shit. Nexus, Omnisphere. I fuck with that Looperator like a motherfucker right yeah, now. Yeah. Looperator, I fuck with this shit. Um, what's the um other one? Saruku, the you know the one oh, I'm talking yeah, the about. Oh yeah, comes with FL. Yeah, yeah the Chinese looking shit. I fuck with that joint. That joint hard. I be freaking some shit now. <laughs> dope, dope, dope. So, t- so tell us about um these these um these bigger records that you let you produce and everything. How did they how did they come about? Um, Sun came out was probably the first one that's released that we made. Like that was just one of the hidden ones that we kind of forgot about. The first song that really made me feel like was that I had a song with Skybox though. That was the first song I did that I really felt like. You know what I'm saying? Like I might I might be kind of okay and make a beat. <laughs> that was the first one. That's some shit you guys made like on tour or nah, we was in Jamaica. Yeah, have you seen the Wanna documentary? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when we was in Jamaica, we made this shit. Um I just woke up one day out of nowhere, like seven o'clock in the morning. And whenever, um, whatever beat I made the day before, the last one, I go back and listen to it just to reset my ears, just to see what it sound like. So I, I was just playing it, and he, he wake up out of nowhere, just bobbing his head like, "Hey, this one, the one right here." Like we tell like engineer flow, like flow, get up, straight come record that motherfucker. And then like, we were listening to it though, like for two days. We like, hold on, I'm like that song we doing. Two more days later, we still listen to the motherfucker like. That's the one that just made me feel like that was the one right there. It's a lot of them though. We got fucking Skybox, Addies, On Camera, Sun Came Out, 200 for Lunch, Dirty Diana. Like, it's a, it's a lot of shit. Like, them shit. It's just perfect timing for all the songs. Like, just the timing that we made them. Like, what makes you guys like pick like what's gonna be the single or what what to like really promote and shit like that? Um, kind of like whichever whatever we listening to the new shit we listening to all the time for real. Like that was just one of the ones we just kept listening to for Skybox, and it just kind of gave us the vibe we were trying to create for the one album. So that's that's why we just picked Skybox for the leading single for the one album. Now when you got because when you got when you make these songs and then you like listen to them and shit by the time they come out I feel like most of the time like if you were involved in making it it's like played out to you at that point. Um, that's that's one thing that I I I train myself to do. I don't never whenever we make a song I don't have them on my phone because mm. I know I'm gonna listen to them all the time. Like when I listen to them we're gonna then it's cool, but I don't even don't don't I don't even want the song because I'm gonna listen to this shit every day. I just like having that feeling when the song come out. Like, damn, I really sat there and made this beat. Yeah. Like, Cause I feel like, cause then you like overanalyze it. And you're like, damn, I could have did this shit different, mm-hmm. like with, the, with with certain sounds. And shit yeah, like I that. just let the time be with time. Like, I just like whenever it come out, I just. I feel like that shit is super important for people to do. Like, bro, don't don't play that shit out. Uh, uh-uh, cause then your ears gonna be fucked up. Your yeah. ears will fuck up and be like, ah, uh, this part need to change, and it really don't. Your ears just tired of hearing this same part. Right. Right. <laughs> 
Because you probably can, you probably could listen to any song that's on Spotify if you listen to it enough times as you would if you made it, you'll start to hear certain shit. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, like damn, I should have right. put a, a little roll or something right. Yeah, <laughs> I should right, put right, a little, right. little smell right now. That's all. Like, yeah, for sure. But then, nah, definitely, especially when you got to go back and uh, and then also play them shits every night and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I know that shit's got to get crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, bro. So wh- I know. So you got these. So the one album came out that that came out like right, kind of in the beginning of the, of the quarantine shit, right? Yeah, kind of in the middle, like the end of May. Yeah, like yeah, the end of May. So obviously, obviously, you guys couldn't do your normal shit. You couldn't tour and do any shows. Mm-hmm. What's what's that shit like? Oh man, that shit was hell. This shit kind of helped us though with the layout of the album. It made us change our whole layout, our whole just everything. What you mean? Like it just changed everything with the layout. Like we were gonna go a whole different way. But we had to, we like, damn, it gave us enough time to just strategize, put certain songs in certain places. You know what I'm saying? And with the quarantine, go, with that shit going on, like, if that would never happen, we would have never made 200 for lunch or we would have never made Dirty Diana. Because we made both of them songs during the quarantine. So if it wasn't for the quarantine, them songs, we probably would have never made either one of those songs. That was a, a real vital thing. When that yeah. shit first happened, were you guys still doing sessions and shit like normal? Yeah, for sure. It was like the normal shit. Because we really don't, we really just got to the studio every day anyway. So it was kind of normal. It was just like, damn, we in the house all day though. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, niggas just need different vicinity, different, different air and shit like that. Like, just different smelling, smell of the air. Like, right, right. I be needing it. Different places and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So what, like, as a DJ though, because I feel like DJ's got it. I, I mean, I know you produce too, so it's like yeah. you literally like just in time started producing and getting these songs out and everything. But mm-hmm. but for like DJs, I feel like they're getting it the hardest right now because artists they can still get their Spotify money, producers can still get their yeah. placements and stuff. But DJs, they really like they really got to get creative out here right now. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. You really got to have your shit together, like find another. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like a lot of DJs should already just have a second, like. Something else that you can contribute to a music, cause if you just DJ in the club, you really not, you really tripping. You got, you got to contribute now to, to something else besides just DJing, for sure. Like you can DJ, it could just be in another type of way you DJ. You know what I'm saying? But you got to find multiple ways of, of, of income for sure. Hundred mm. percent. Is it really if you're just doing club DJing and stuff like that? Is it really enough to really like get your money up type shit? I mean, it just depends how you really live. It just depends on your way of living. If you if you live the way like that, some people can't afford. Some some people so that's good for some people. They comfortable with that. Some people not comfortable with that. Some people want man. I need more. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you weren't producing this stuff and this shit happened, what 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 would your mindset be like? <laughs> I ain't no telling. I I I don't I wouldn't even know, bro. Cause that shit is just my life. For real. I love making beats all day. Like I love doing that shit. Just like. A soothe for me, like it's therapy. Like I just whatever I'm thinking, like I'm just put it on the beat. Like, I I really don't know what the fuck I'd be doing if I wasn't producing. Really. Right. I'd be lost, <laughs> lost in the zone. <laughs> for the for the producers at home, if they wanted to, if they want to link up and send you um loops and stuff like that, how would they go about doing that? Um, my email taurus dot curry zero zero at gmail dot com. Oh shit, he put the email up. Yeah, hell yeah. Say it one more time. Taurus, T A U R U S dot Curry, which is my last name, C U R R I E, zero zero at Gmail. Or y'all can just like DM me or some shit. Like, I be fucking with people. Like, I ain't, you ain't that too many DMs in there where I can't see them over the top of me. You, know you, you gotta, I, I gotta check in with you uh, like a couple of week, a uh, week after this drops and see if the email went crazy. Cause that's <laughs> usually what people say after they show up, they put their email, they put their DM, they're like, bro. Shit went crazy. Yeah, you know, you got a lot of folks fuck with you, so I know it's going to go crazy. Load that motherfucker up, y'all. Load it up, get them placement. Yeah, for sure. I fuck, I fuck with y'all. And I'm a tag. I ain't that type that ain't going to tag you or uh, put you on there. Like, the per- the person that did the loop for Dirty Diana, my boy Alex Lustin. Shout out to my boy. I tag him on everything. Shout out to Alex, bro. How Feel you me? link up with him? Um, That nigga, um, I seen he did a splice. He had, like, a splice loop pack on okay. there. So I just typed his name in on Instagram. I'm like, this nigga got some hard shit. Then I seen he did um party next dose. Um he did two loops on there. He did split decision and um never again. And I'm like, oh, I gotta fuck with him. He on some. You know what I'm saying? He just on a different one. I wanna fuck with a nigga that don't even make 
hip hop or rap trap mm-hmm. loops. I want a nigga that makes some soul shit. You know what I'm saying? Different one. Yeah. For sure. And you said some shit, you said some important shit. You said you like you, you tagged the producer and made the loop too. Hell yeah. Which I feel like a lot of big producers they don't do that. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm gonna tag you because it's like, nigga, you made the loop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just did it in my own way. It ain't like you sat there and made the beat with me, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna tag you, you did what you had to do on them over. Mm. I fuck with them. That's what they be wanting though. Like, you fuck up your relationship like that, not tagging nigga, and he been sending hard shit the whole time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody different though. Yeah, Most definitely. Now, now he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna send you the exclusive shit. I'm gonna send you the, the, the same <laughs> shit. I mean, but now if you got him a placement though, you know, yeah, that, that's nah, he got some shit. He, uh, he already know he got some shit in the, in the, you know, what I'm saying in the vault. We already got. Oh, that nine times out of ten. Oh my god, see, he did that one. That's one of the ones. He ain't paying my shit. We gonna mm-hmm. wait on. Fire, fire. So what, what's on the way? What's coming out soon? Um. I don't, I really don't know right now. We just, you know what I'm saying? Brainstorm. We got a lot of videos and shit coming up for the deluxe and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's really it. The two hundred for lunch. I had two hundred for lunch, man. <laughs> that's not how I fucked on a cunt. <laughs> as far as far as a producing, are you are you strictly just focused on working with Gunner? Are you you working with other artists too? I work with other artists. Um, me and um me and Don Tolliver, we got some shit that my boy. I fuck with Don, that my boy. Yeah, he's fire. Um. Who else? Me and Yak, my bro- my brother Yak got it. You know Yak, he signed he signed to Slime. Yak got it. Okay. Me and Yak got some shit. Me and Slime got a couple songs. You know what I'm saying? I want to work with some with some more people though. Like I just started making beats though, bro. So I really don't know how this shit really go. Like, I want to work with some more people though for sure. You said you've been making it for a year, right? Yeah, yeah. Like February 2019. That's when I really just just started. February 2019. But how how long how long how long ago did you start making like? Fire shit or shit like you would be willing to mm. put out there. April, January, February, March. Probably like April. About three months in into when I started making them. That's when I started kind of making some okay shit. Cause gonna have we had about four or five songs, but they just won. They that they, they I didn't feel like in my mind that they could go on the album. So yeah. Most definitely, most definitely, man. And then I guess last thing we'll talk about. Being out here in LA and stuff, like I know, I know, um, you know, you got relationships with artists and stuff. But say you didn't have any relationships and you were coming out here or you were coming to Atlanta, what what would you? What would some of your first steps be to try to just get get something going? Um, probably um reaching out, just reaching out to to A and R's and engineers and shit, trying to build relationships with them. With A and R. Um, we just A and R's for like different artists and their engineers and like the people that record them and stuff like that. Like if I was if I didn't have relationships, that's what I would do. Like it's different from Atlanta. You can just go to the studio and bump into somebody. Like I feel like in LA, it's you just it's just too big. You gotta go about it a different type of way. What you mean? Because there's like too many studios, too many different places to be. It's just too big. Like it's it's so many studios in in LA that you. We ain't never even heard about probably. Like we ain't never been to in Atlanta. You probably been to every studio or know of or heard of every studio in Atlanta. Right. So it's just it's just kind of different. You gotta just go about it a different way. Out here, I feel like. Yeah. Facts though. Yes. Yeah. I like how Atlanta is definitely like smaller. It seems it seems more 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 like, um, what's the word? It's definitely less. Um, damn, I can't think of the damn word. Intimidating as far as like. Like out here, it's just so damn big. You know, you yeah. don't, I don't know where anything is. You know yeah, I mean? you fuck around, want to just stay at home. It's too big. I don't even want. It's too much going right. on. I'm good. <laughs> but people, people, when they come to Atlanta, they're like what studios? I'm always like, shit. Book at Loud House. You never know. You definitely meet somebody Ooh, there. Loud House one. Death of the ones. That's one of our starts right there. That's crazy that you said Loud House. That's one. Of the, I. That's one of the ones where gonna really just lock in and just like that's one of the ones right there. Loud House. Man. Shout out to Loud House Studios. Not for fact, real. Man. No, nah, yeah, because that's where that's where Turbo and shit came up on there and shit like nah, that. Nah, for sure. That's one of the ones. Like, I could just, I every time I hear DS3, I just think about Loud think House. Think about Loud. Yeah, like, that shit crazy. Yeah, Loud is definitely the spot. What else, man? What's another Atlanta place? Like, Death Star. Shout out to Death Star. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like Patrick, but nobody really... Yeah, people go to Patrick, but you can't yeah. you can't just go there and because you know how they keep it separated. Yeah, I always tell people like don't book Patrick because you're not going to be able to run into somebody the way you would at like yeah. these other places. Like Silent Sound, for Silent Sound. I never been there. 
Silent Sound 5. Silent Sound 5. It's right on, um, down what's that street? It's over there by like Northside Drive and shit. Okay. By like the cookout and all that. Okay, yeah, where are the studios? Are? Yeah, you know where it gives it. Right, right, right. Tree Sound too, I, I fold with Tree Sound. Yeah, Tree Sound's dope. Tree Sound is just so far, it make you gotta lock in. Like it's so far from wherever you stay at, you gotta, like I gotta just be here for six, seven hours now. Right. If you're gonna drive, take that thirty minute drive. Or whatever. Yeah, you can't leave tree <laughs> tree sign to about uh like six, seven, eight in the morning or some shit like that. If you want to, cause it's too far from the house, you might well just lock in and tree sign. <laughs> hey, we're giving people gems here, man. Now, now, nah, they, now, for now sure. they know where to book and stuff. No, nah, gonna go up there. It's been some music made enough for real, some magic. Fact show. Um, and for the people, that's where the um the whole J Cole Revenge of the Dreamer shit was too. Uh huh. Yep. For for sure. Man, sure will. So, Fire. so what's the best advice that you could give for these people at home watching? Like some some homework, some something to focus on. What's the best piece of advice you you, you would give anyone that's really just kind of just starting off with maybe maybe they're fired making beats, but they're just starting off with the with their with their career. Man, the thing I could say is, man, just be yourself. Like, don't ever get depressed or, or discouraged because like ain't shit going on. Like, shit going gonna turn up sometime like just don't if that's probably my biggest thing that I say like the just your inner self just like damn I'm not good like that's probably the biggest defeat like you can do to yourself defeat yourself right now like just don't never get depressed just always be yourself and just find a way for real that's all I can really say and and like you said too don't do it unless it's some shit that you would do for free. And, and yeah, if you ain't gonna do it for free, don't do it, man, because you wasting your time. Don't be doing it because you see niggas fresh and niggas got bitches and shit like, hey, you gonna get you some bitches, bro. <laughs> Relax. Definitely don't think of the money first, though. <laughs> no, for sure. You gotta think about the craft first, man. The would you craft. recommend Would you recommend doing some other shit to get money? Like, just like, have, have another, like, well, you did say, you said, as a DJ, have another hustle, like, yeah. Don't just look at that shit as your main source of income. For sure. Don't look at it as your main. I mean, you can like it's I feel like sometimes people defeat themselves too because they be thinking about a plan B. Like, mm-hmm. fuck it. Plan A. Like that plan B, like, it wouldn't be no plan B if you didn't think about it. Like, I just feel like sometimes niggas defeat themselves doing that too. Like, man, if I don't if this don't work out, shit, I'm gonna do this. If this even though you got to think like that, but fuck it, bro. Your first mind, what the fuck was right? Like, go yeah. with it. Fuck it. I know it's probably hard and it's it's like, it look far, look like, how the fuck I'm going to do this? But, hey, do it. Go with go with your faith. What go. do you think about people going to college as a plan B? College is fire. College is plan A. I encourage everybody to go to college. Why you say that? That shit just like, it, it gives you a, a look on life, a whole different look, especially if you go somewhere like that's, far away from home, not where you from. Like College is kind of a scam because that shit don't <laughs> teach you nothing. It don't teach you like how to get some money like and what you really want to do. But I for sure, college helps you for your mind. Like when you go to college, you got to apply. You got to take some out of college and apply that shit to everything else. But to get away and give you time to think about what the fuck you're going to do, I for sure encourage college. 100%. That gave me time to think about what the fuck I'm finna do with my life. Cause everybody can't not be in college. You not be in college and your parents like, hey, you need to be in college somewhere. And you'll be getting frustrated with yourself. Like, damn, I'm supposed to be in college. And really, you can just be hustling out here doing your thing, working your own moves. Like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, college is lit. I fuck with college. It's a lot of vibes in college, guys. <laughs> what what was your what was your degree when you went to college? Um, mass communication. Bachelor's. I got a bachelor degree in mass communication. Cool shit. That made me want to go to class, though. The girls, I'm like, damn, it's girls in class. I need to go to class every day, 10 o'clock, fresh as a motherfucker. You did good in college, though? Yeah, for sure. Because I had to have a certain grade point average to stay in college because I had like a partial scholarship. Okay. So I had to get like a 3.0 every semester to even stay there to be getting a little bit off of what I had to pay to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I love, I just loved Atlanta so much. So I'm like, I got to get good grades. I ain't no way in hell. I'm finna be getting some bad grades to go back to Memphis. I need mm-hmm. to be getting good grades to stay the fuck here to see what I'm gonna do to elevate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was just my whole motivation to hey, get good grades. Like, we're gonna turn up and go fuck bitches and get high all night. But when six o'clock come and got I need to get up and be ready for class. I can get in at seven and goddamn, I'm gonna smoke me two blunts to go to class at nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't missing no class. 
See, that's dope, though. I feel like I, I know I couldn't do that shit. And you did four years, right? Bachelor, that's four yeah, years. Yeah, I did four years. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, four years. I never finished a, a one semester. Out of there. We's out of here. Know what I'm saying? Four years. Feel me? Damn, that's crazy. No, nah, fire. I just need that shit for me, though, like for myself, just to say, like, I graduated college. I feel like I, need, I didn't need it for, for to apply to a job or nothing, but I need that just for my soul. Like, to say, like, I did some shit. I finished some shit that a lot of people can't finish. Know what I'm saying? Had to be that one. And for my mom, shout out to my mom. I love you, mama. Hey. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely, bro. Um, I guess last this was a question too that I want to cover too. I know, I know we said last was the last question. Nah, you good, Sean. We're here all day if you want to be. I don't care. But I think this is important too. And I've heard uh, my boy Sonny, he's talked about this a lot. Studio etiquette and studio session. Like, oh, that nigga shit go crazy. <laughs> the uh studio etiquette junk Sonny yeah. did. Yeah. Yes, I'm full with it. He on nigga ass. Who he on nigga ass? Nah, he don't play, right? He don't play, bro. <laughs> he on. He so serious. That's why I fuck with him because he's serious as a mother. Bro. Dead ass serious. Nah, he dead for real. He definitely gonna punch in your face. Nah, for real. But what you were saying about the studio? Keep going. So okay, I guess a good way to put it, like, what's some, what's some, like, some weird shit that people, like, you might have seen people do where you're like, bro, like, if I could, if I could warn people not to, not to be this certain way or not to do these kind of things or not to be too, whatever. What, phones, like phones and shit. Like, oh my god, that's just. That's one of the ones like, bro, put your fucking phone up. Like, I could, I, I just seen niggas just recording, like, look at this stupid ass recording. Like, I, I'm seeing them in the corner, cause I, I'm peeping the whole room. Like, sneak recording type? Yeah, thing? like, you know how this shit be just probably um, phones, man. Um, talking while a nigga recording, like, walking in and out the room while mm-hmm. a nigga recording. Like, come on, bro. I can hear this in the background while I record. Um, let me see. What's some shit you think? No, nah, I agree with the phone shit too. And, like, you know, Getting getting store like especially if it's like your first time around someone because I feel like people get in the mindset and I know this mindset because I had it before too where you're like you want to you want to take advantage because you want like because you know it's all about Instagram yeah and, and your brand and stuff like that so like you're like okay this is a moment that I could I could use to to you know yeah 100%. advance my career but you can't think about it like that you got to just be like this is not the last time I'm gonna be in this session and you stuff if like you're that. in the room you're in the room for a reason my exactly guy. like. I don't, we don't even want niggas to hear the snippet. Like, the snippet should be cool with the snippet pages for people to already, like, get a gif of music. But we don't really even want the fans to even hear this song. Yeah. We want it to be a moment. Like, I don't want niggas to be listening to the song we hear, putting snippets together, making the whole song and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all right, this shit. Because you know those pages will be quick to... Yeah, for sure. I fuck with them, gunna, though. Gunna new, gonna snippet. They own that. Shit. They own yeah. nigga ass. I fuck with them niggas. Uh, what's the nigga name? Gunna clone... All them niggas, I fuck with them niggas. All them fan pages and stuff. Yeah, I fuck with them. Shout out to y'all, Slap Business. No, nah, yeah, they just love. Help. But but I think um, but yeah, I think like don't have. I think it's like a scarcity mindset where you're like, yeah, damn, I don't know if I'm gonna ever be back here again. So I gotta make sure I, I get my evidence that I was here or whatever. I gotta get my picture with such and such, the man, producer, the artist. If y'all don't relax, man, we ain't trying to. And then I I feel like some artists don't even feel comfortable with you doing that in their life. I feel like now nah, I can't correct because I gotta worry about you taking a picture. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Just don't make a nigga feel uncomfortable, man. And I think it's also a thing too. Like I feel like people people will notice that if you're not thirsty. Yeah, for sure. They're just like, oh yeah, bro's just cool. Like bro's just here kicking. Yeah, it's not nigga all. Nigga notice you do some burnt shit. <laughs> don't do burnt shit. Don't burn out, guys. Please, okay. Please, don't burn out. No. <laughs> don't do it. Right. Save, save yourself. <laughs> no, nah, save yourself from the fire. Um. Anything else? So, uh, as far as studio etiquette, um. I don't know. Can you think of anything else? I think that's those are really important. Sonny, everything Sonny said for sure. Sonny was on that. Yeah, I forgot why yeah, oh, he said. He said, "Oh, he said, don't just walk into someone's session if it's not your session. Don't be late. Yeah, if uh, if 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 you're not paying for the session, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Because Sonny's real generous. Sonny, you know, Sonny's yeah. got his studio. And yeah, stuff, I know. So. I never met him, but. I just from seeing him, like yeah. for sure, I fuck with Sonny. Yeah, because you know he's got his studio and he just like you know. Yeah, he's let us just come up and and, and, and you know use it for for sure. Yeah, he he seemed stuff. like a chill chill nigga though. Like yeah. yeah, he ain't too much. But when it comes to that studio and that working, he on your ass. Oh no, yeah, he's dead serious about it. <laughs> nah, I fuck with and it. And producers though. getting paid too. No, nah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he got a passion for it for real. I fuck with it. Shout out to Sunny Digital, man. Shout Sunny out to Sunny Digital. Fact though. <laughs> Slap. Atlanta Atlanta legend for sure. No, nah, for sure. Shout out to Sunny. Slap business. But yeah, man. So so you already dropped the email. Um. Drop the email, guys. Let people know it's uh where to where to tap in on IG and Twitter. Um, who I know your Twitter's like f- ten underscore. Bro, cause somebody got my fucking name. I'm trying to get just Taurus. Like 
It's a lot of underscores, though. I don't even know how many underscores it is, y'all, but just type in Taurus on Twitter. And who is Taurus on Instagram? You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. Who the fuck is Taurus? Who is that nigga? <laughs> Most definitely, bro. You you got any idea of when the, the Taurus shit is going to ever come back? Man, I don't know, but I hope soon, man, because... I can't wait because when soon we get there, I just want all the mosh pits to open the fuck up. Y'all open this shit up, bro. Like everybody. The right, the back, everybody open this shit the fuck up, man. Wider, please. Most definitely, man. I can't wait. I was hoping you were going to have some kind of industry inside information. Like, <laughs> this, ah, is, damn. this is when it's coming back. Yeah, don't worry. Oh, yeah. One of them bloopers, one of them. <laughs> I wish I had one of them motherfuckers. I wish, man. Can somebody tell me y'all DM me that too? Uh, in my email, whoever know when we're going to start back touring because I'm ready. <laughs> Me and the guys, you know what I'm saying? Me and the slimes. I, I, predict, I, I predict by the end of the year. I predict by the end of the year. Some, some, some kind of limited shows like less yeah. people or something like that will be better. Oh, now you seen that shit in, um, I think it was the UK. You ain't see it? Uh-uh. Bro. Oh, my God. What? They got like, it's like a festival, right? But it's a they got sections with six people, and everybody got their own section, bro. And they got glass up. No, nah, ain't no glass up. It just you gotta wear a mask and shit. But it's like, bro, it was. I'm, I'm gonna show you the picture after this, bro. It's a real festival. They got like, I'm gonna show you the shit. I'm gonna show you. You are gonna be tripping, <laughs> bro. This shit, I can't. I can't even say too much because people people get mad. But bro, I feel like this, this is super annoying with the mask. And it should be fucking up my fits, line like. That shit fuck up my fit sometimes. Like, I done got to correct the mask with my fit now. <laughs> that shit sucks, bro. They fuck up my whole fit. And I just feel like, bro, if you, if, if, I don't think that shit's going to be, I don't know. I'm, I ain't gonna I ain't <coughs> Look, the fuck going to be on your ass yeah, yeah, in listen, the comments. Hey. Wear, wear your mask, wear your mask, be safe, social distance, all social that Social distance, stuff. six feet. Most definitely. <laughs> but all right, though, appreciate you pulling up, nah, though, bro. No, for sure, Slam. You know I fuck with you, 100%. We, hey, let's, bro. We out. We out. Slap.